Hi, my name is Margie Kerr. I'm a sociologist and author of the book Scream, Chilling Adventures in the Science of Fear. Let's talk about monsters under the bed, or in the closet, or in your bedroom. I mean, this is one of the classic all-time fears that every kid seems to have. What is the deal with that? Where do we start to develop this fear of monsters under the bed? So it's, and it's something that adults have too, you know, if we think about lying alone in an apartment and wondering what's outside, it just looks a little bit different, but it's still the, the same idea of monsters under the bed. And it's really a, a reflection of kids trying to make sense of their surroundings and also their own fears. When the monster usually uh, appears is when they start sleeping by themselves uh, and having a, a real awareness of their environments. And so they're awake before they go to sleep and they start hearing things and they start maybe seeing some shadows and they're not you know, as close uh, physically to, to their caretakers. You know, the thing that I wonder, is there a connection between this monster under the bed type of phobia and something like, Nightmare on Elm Street, because the monster there, Freddy Krueger, is getting us when we are at our most vulnerable, when we are asleep and typically alone. Do you see that there is a connection there which speaks to the popularity of Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, absolutely. We are so vulnerable in our sleep, and right before we go to sleep, in that moment of kind of between worlds where you, you start dreaming and then you do that, mm -hmm. that and you can feel in your body like, oh my gosh, I'm, I could not defend myself in this moment. Uh, and, and absolutely, you're right, it, it is a time when we're so vulnerable. And then you add on top of that that if you wake up in the middle of a nightmare, then it is tough to, to grapple where you are. And if there really is something you know, going on, I woke up in the middle of the night the other night, my cat had scratched my face. And I was like, what is happening? And it took me a second to realize, oh, you know, that was my fault. I just rolled over and hit her and so she's gonna hit me back and that was fine but you know these are the things when you wake up uh, it's your brain's not fully online yet it's gonna take a second to get an idea of, of what's happening and if there really is a monster in your room do you find that there's a lot of fears that are physiologically explainable that we are then associating myth and and folklore to Yes, I absolutely. Um, if you go back in time and you try to imagine how people would make sense of something like asthma or some of the, the chronic or contagious diseases that were happening, you know, it was inexplainable when, without modern science, you know, what was responsible? Well, it's a monster. It's something that's sitting on your chest. It's something that's sucking your air. It's something that, you know, has gotten inside you and is trying to um, to destroy you. That's why you see some of the early medicine was so invasive. You know, the, the drilling, the, the holes in the brain to let the spirits out, the bleeding, the, uh, the purging, all of this idea that there's something that has gotten inside of you and usually it had a supernatural or a religious uh, meaning and you've got to get it out. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's all of these uh, stories and the monsters are just attempts to, to understand this existence and what's happening in our brain and body. And stories help us do that. You know, if you look at Alexander the Great, his stories of going into India, this is before Common Era sometime, he talks of bats that had human teeth and these spiders that were, you know, 10 feet tall. And uh, when you think about it, it was, you know, early <laughs> civilizations just trying to make sense of this world that they didn't know what was out there. And I just, I think about the early sailors who would go out and see something like an octopus or something like um, the lion mane jellyfish that is, I think like, I don't know, nine feet in diameter. You'd have to, I mean, that is a monster. So yeah. there were very real monsters back then, but today, um, you know, it's just trying to make sense of these abstract fears. Yeah. Well, uh, aside from monsters under the bed, sometimes the monster is your cat who scratches you yes. in the middle of the night. <laughs> and cats are traditionally considered vessels of evil who <laughs> even suck your breath out at night, That's according true. to some stories. That's true. So, uh, all right, well, hey, thanks for talking. I hope, now I'm afraid to go to sleep because there might be a monster under my bed tonight. Yes. So I'll just shake his or her hand and yep. say, we're cool. Yep.